Okay, well, we're on to stage two, and this is actually a 650 horsepower. This is one of ours. It's going into our rental boiler. Um, so we've got the tube sheets, and now what happens? Right now, all the main welding from stage one has been done. You can see now we have our Morrison tube already in place, uh -huh. finally welded out. Everything's finalized, tube sheets completely done. Now this is where we actually stage for putting tubes inside the boiler, uh, getting those fit, set into place, then the process of cutting one end, making sure that we, we leave the proper distance on the end for proper expansion roll and bead process for this joint right. uh, to secure this. Now you can see on this product the, the inlet going into the uh, second pass the tubes, we, we do do a fillet weld okay. uh, to help secure the heat transfer because really that's what that process is about. Okay. It's not really, you know, people used to say a, a, uh, a seal weld, uh -huh. uh, don't like that terminology. No. <laughs> uh, this is really a fillet weld, a okay. one pass weld that actually helps the heat transfer from that tube sheet to the actual tube, just to you know get that release from that, yeah. and to avoid burning any kind of ends, you know, if there was any kind of length of flame or something like that, or flue gas erosion. So. And now you're, th it's very critical that these are not too long. Absolutely. That stick out, right? We typically have a one sixteenth of an inch typically sticking out from that for a final when we're doing our weld process. Now, if it's a expand roll and bead. Typically you have uh, about a 3 16th long uh, distance there outside the tube sheet. Then that allows a nice clean bead when that beading process, because we use what we call a three-in-one tool, okay. Wilson tool. Uh, it, it allows this process, which in the old days you used to have a separate beater, Yeah. right? You yeah. expand the bead, then you take a beater, yep. mandrel, and run at it, and it was like a jackhammer. It was very loud and noisy. Well, now the three-in-one tool does it all in one process. Okay. So when it expands the tube, gets it to the proper expansion, then it begins that rolling over of the tube end to the tube sheet. Yep. The, the important part with a bead process is getting that bead tight yep. to that tube sheet, right? So if you get too long, it either gets too wide and, 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 it, and it isn't able to, to uh, roll that, that, that bead over or that tube over to the tube sheet very well. Okay. Now I'm noticing that number one, the tubes are XID tubes, which means there's a, a rifling, a rib, a rib in there. Mm -hmm. What is that actually doing? The rib allows the flue gas stream, when it comes from that furnace, turns around, goes through that tube. Typically on a bare tube, it'll hit that, it'll strike the first two or three foot, then it goes linear. Yep. You know, it just goes flat through that tube. So you don't get the transfer in a bare tube like you will a rifle tube. It creates gotcha. turbulence. Yep through that tube throughout the entire length of that tube through that boiler. So it strikes and we get that great heat transfer in that boiler. It increases your fuel to steam thermal performance tremendously. Sure. You know, anywhere from two to 3% gain by using a rifle tube like that. And as far as kind of the same thing here, we've got a corrugated uh, Morrison tube, right? You, there's, there's boilers that are straight and yep. flat and then there's boilers that have the corrugated. You know, the nice thing with us, we give alternatives for this. Uh, there are some customers, believe it or not, they like a plain furnace, yep. uh, you know, for their boilers, but there are several that demand a Morrison tube. The advantage of a Morrison tube is it allows that good heat transfer again. Mm -hmm. Also, you get by with a thinner wall per ASME code because of the rigidness, you know, the the, the, the ridges that you have throughout, that creates that additional strength okay. to make up for the wall thickness you would have to have for a plain furnace. Awesome. Now okay. what that allows, you get into high pressure boilers like this. This is a 250 PSI design boiler. Yeah. If that was a plain furnace, this would probably be another quarter of an inch thicker material okay. to comply to meet the, the, the requirements of ASME code section one. Okay. Now, again, this is a two pass. Uh -huh. um, just a quick question, all right? Just mm -hmm. maybe some people might even want to know this is why is that the actual Morrison tube itself, why is it down at the bottom and not in the middle? Typically, on a two pass boiler, you know, you, you like that lower position furnace to allow that hot source being at the bottom. It creates a natural circulation inside the boiler mm -hmm. to create that circulation required. So we don't have any stratification 
in the water. It's a big word for me. That creates hot pockets. Okay, all right, hot pockets. Okay, <laughs> that, that would actually cause problems with that tube or maybe even the tube sheet area. Okay. Typically, a lot of failures that have occurred with certain products happens in this lower section, the hottest section of that. If that circulation isn't good yeah. within that boiler, tubes too close, because that's one thing we haven't hit on is our ligament, ligament space. Space, yeah. We paid close attention to that when we designed all of our Frontier product line. I wanted to make sure that when we developed this, that we maintain a three quarter inch minimum between each tube hole here. Okay. That just allows that circulation to properly filter through all those tubes yeah. with its natural circulation. You start getting these too close, now you, be, you, you may have concerns with this circulation process in this boiler. Gotcha. So with your inlet of your feed water, we create a little diversion plate that creates that natural circulation to get that started. And then with your natural heat of that hotter source down there, it just generates that circulation throughout that boiler. Perfect, now, great information. Let's move, uh, one other thing that you do that we absolutely love um, is for the door. Yeah, this Davit arm, guys, we take this very serious. We understand today that a lot of boiler operators, maybe a lot of boiler rooms, may have one operator there at all time. Mm -hmm. and, and if for some reason, if something occurred, boilers shut down, they're forced to open up the rear of this boiler, can one man open that very you know, heavy door? Yeah. I mean, a door this size, you're probably looking at 12,000 pounds. Yeah. So take a look in, in, in the near future, competitors on what they're using for their support structure. Number one, for, for that anchor point, bearing system. Guys, you literally, whether I have a door on here or not, this is how free yeah. this door will open and close. Yeah. And it's, it's just a wonderful thing. So when I open it, I don't have that sensation of the door dropping. Right. You don't have a droop yeah. because that's a problem. If you're one guy out here trying to close this back up and you don't have a structure like this to support that heavy door, you're gonna to have to find floor jacks or maybe an ele sure. uh, some sort of a overhead yep. to help bring that weight up, set it back into place. You won't have that with this system. Well, you, you think about like in our situation with a rental boiler, you know, the trailer's off the ground. And if you don't have something like this, and I can remember back in the day when we'd have the forklifts come in and all yep. that, but literally one guy can do it and can open the boiler up. Um, and that makes it so much better for the customer, I know, and even for our technicians that are out on site. Safety, the whole deal, it, it really works out well. It really so, does. Well, I think we're moving on to stage three. Stage three. All right, let's go.